This is an Ellis Mowers and More small engine repair. Stay connected on Instagram and Facebook at Ellis Mowers and More. Comments or questions? Leave them below or email me, ellis at ellismowers.com. Parts used in today's repair are found using the links in the description below. And as always, like and subscribe for more small engine content. On today's repair video, we have a John Deere Gator in. This thing is like a 20, 20 or 21 model year. Um, Kawasaki engine in it. And what it's doing, it's only two years old roughly. And it is a, an, an absolute pain to start. Um, this belongs to a local athletics um club or athletics club at a local school um, he said that it would cold start fine but then would progressively like if it got warm and then they tried to restart it would take a while to get restarted it would progressively get worse and worse and worse and now it's almost to the point where it hardly even started at all a lot of people would think oh it's a carb issue they sent it to a guy a local shop here he uh, did some sort of carb work on it. I don't know what, but guess what? It did the exact same thing when it came back. So, uh, and now it's almost impossible to start. I'm gonna show you what it's doing, how I went through the troubleshooting process. It really wasn't that bad. And we're gonna be replacing what I think is the part that is the issue, and it's not fuel related. So, small engines, fuel, spark, compression. Uh, one of those three. So if we take fuel out of the equation, we have spark and compression. Um, you can do a compression tester, but a lot of times these guys have uh, compression released on them, and if you can't get them started, those compression releases won't give you an accurate um, compression test, so to speak. Uh, so we are going to test the spark on it. I'm going to show you what's wrong with it, and we're going to replace it. Let's go ahead and get started. So we've got a dump bed on. I've got the dump bed open. I actually have already gone through this carburetor just to make sure everything was clean on it. It was. I put it back together. It runs the same. So, uh, top jets and all that good stuff. I don't know if this one has a top jet. It does. But that's not the issue. What the issue is, is... Let me show you what it's doing first when I try and crank it. It'll probably start right up here, but... Like it just will not start. Once you get it started, it'll idle. So that right there alone should tell you that carburetor's good. Y'all can see me feathering that you can hear it trying to die out now. Y'all can see me feathering the choke and all that stuff. And it's like a balancing act. Choke, throttle all the time. And then it finally hits. When you pull the plug, it's wet. You can kind of hear it dying now. So, what I'm going to do is get my spark tester out. I'm going to try and show y'all as close as I can what it looks like when I'm trying to crank this thing. So I've gotten y'all fairly close here. Hopefully y'all can see that all right. I'm gonna be looking right there. Um, we'll cr try and crank it up and you're gonna look at the spark right there. So you can see it's sparking, but it's fairly weak. You wanna see uh, a little bit brighter of a light and I'll see if I can get it started one more time and show y'all what it's supposed to look like once it picks up. It's probably still going to be a little bit weak, but... And it's not going to start now. Sorry guys, phone call from somebody who bought a mower from me probably before this channel even started. Uh... Trying it again, I don't think it's gonna start, but I think you can see that the 
spark is pretty weak. I've already checked the valves. The compression is good and all that. So, um, or at least the valves are to spec. That is what I can at least tell y'all. That suspects me that the ignition coil is bad because sometimes I can look at this and see that it's like skipping and it's almost like every second or every third revolution is when that spark is setting off. So I'm going to pull this, if I can get it started, into the garage. We're going to replace the ignition coil on this, which isn't too hard. You just have to get all this junk out of the way in order just to get down there to, the, to it. And uh, I think... Maybe it's right on top of this plate. Maybe I'll be lucky. Let me see. I think it is right here. See if I can access it from these four bolts right here. This, These four bolts. And um, see what we can go for there. Gotten the four of these off. Now what I'm going to do, I've got to take a fifth. Uh, brace, uh, what is that, transmission mount off back in the back. When we do that, I'm going to pull that cover up and hopefully this ignition coil is under there. I'll be a happy camper if it is. take this off this cover nope darn uh, so what's next is I've got to take the whole Carburetor. I gotta take this cover off right here, I think. I think it sits right up under there somewhere. So that's gonna be a little bit of a task. I might try taking this back cover off first. No, that's not going to do anything. All right, this cover's got to come off. Either way, I think that plate had to go. A bunch of 10 millimeters. Um, we're going to take an 8 millimeter to the air box. This is a little bit of a task. I might as well go ahead and show it to y'all. Uh, grab the tools I need and we'll get started. I think I've generally got what I need here. 8 millimeter is going to take off this little elbow for the carburetor. Forgive me if my hands are in the way. I'm going to try and take this thing off. This thing right here is tight though, so you gotta, you gotta work it. There we go. That can just kind of bend down and it's out of the way. Next order of business. Gotta get that breather pipe off. Just some pliers to pull that away. Okay, now a couple of 10 millimeters are going to get our uh, little, L, uh, little plastic tube out here, intake tube. I don't think I can use an impact on them. Maybe I can. At least to get them loose. No. I gotta get these intake nuts off. Once I get these off, we'll rejoin you. And we'll take the carb linkages and stuff off. A little closer angle. 
these nuts are coming off. This is a pain just to get to an ignition coil. Crazy. So I've got to take all of this off. Carb will slide out. I'm going to pinch the fuel line here in a second. an ignition coil. Briggs ignition coil you can have done in about two minutes. On most machines anyways. So we're going to take the fuel line off here. Okay. So that's off. You may leak a little bit of gas. We're not going in the car because we already have been in there. And we know it's good. Pulling this off. Gaskets, I can tell you, these are already, these are already kind of split. So, tells me that somebody was in here at some point. And they were. I'm going to take this throttle here. Pull the cable around right there. Once we do that, we can pull it out of the top right there and that goes out of the way now we're going to take the carb off we're leaking a little bit of gas out of the inlet because of where I took it off at oh ton of gas coming out now we get plenty of gas uh, if you pulled the carburetor or if you, if you pulled the spark plug you would have found it to be wet So now we're at this point to take off. We gotta take this whole cover off here, which is not gonna be the fastest thing to in the world to do. I take these this fuel line, just kind of place it to the side there, or just kind of let it hang down. It's not gonna hurt anything. I've got it clamped off, so now we've got some 10 millimeters to take care of. Where all those are may be a little bit fun. Got one up here at the top. Uh, there's a second. Oh, looks like I almost need to take this whole linkage out here. Uh, so we've got, I know we've got at least these two. One on the side over here. And then I'm sure we've got some on the bottom down there. Oh, those are not going to be the most fun to get to. There's at least one on the bottom, and maybe a second one. I'm going to work on them. I'll show you those on the bottom, and we'll see if we can finish getting this cover off so that we can uh, change this thing out. Y'all ready for this one? Not fun, but we got it. So you got the one at the top here. I just kind of unbolted that and just kind of pulled it off to the side so that I could get that nut out easier second one third one your fourth one is down under here somewhere in that general area i think y'all see it and the fifth one right here oh my gosh that thing right there I had to get like universal joint and all that mess just so i could get access to that thing that was crazy so now i think we've got the cover to come off let's see put y'all back here so that we can get it off hopefully this pulls off and we got the coil now so we got something still hooked on here for some reason there we are finally my goodness so we've at least got access to it, but do I need to take the air box out of it now so that I can get better access? I don't know. Let's put it in reverse forward. This 
this right here is a pain. Maybe I can take the whole air box out of this thing. All right, so let's see. Pulling up. All right, we got the air box kind of out now. Maybe we can pull the remainder of this out here. Come on. Got to pull this bracket off. I know y'all can't see a thing right now, but so I pulled this air box and this air filter bracket out of the way. Can I get it off now? Let's see. The fuel line is down below where we need to be, so that's good. Ain't got to get it all the way. I need to get it most of the way, though. Goodness gracious. Just the way these engines are used makes it really hard to get it off. I'm going to see if I can access the coil at least, and I'll be right back with you. So I kind of got everything out of the way to get good enough access to this ignition coil, which is right here. I'm going to pull the kill wire off of it for right now. And my goodness, whoo! I ought to just change one of these things. I think it's two 10 millimeters holding it on. You know, if this was in another application, it'd be a lot easier. But in this Gator application, it is not. All right, we're pulling it out. I get this bottom bolt out too. Literally had to pull everything off of the side of this engine to get down here. More labor for me, right? All right. I've been spoiled because I've worked on push mowers and lawn tractors for the longest time. Say, so, that's. Come on now. That's off, finally. Wow. So it looks, I mean, it looks to be in good shape. What we're gonna do, we've got a little bit of seepage right there. Um, I don't see any visual issues with it. I'm going to put these on the multimeter and see if they ohm out the same. And we're going to put the new one on and see if that works. So we're got the old coil, the new coil here. Check the new coil out. We're ohming it out. I got it on 20K ohms. And you can see we're hitting at about 5.7 ohms right there on that one. This one right here ain't showing a thing. Doing the lead of the spark plug lead. There's the bare part. I can show you that everything zeroes out on the leads. Trying to get any sort of anything. So this coil, you can tell by that. As long as you can get a good solid like spot, and this coil is not very old. This thing just went bad for some reason. Hopefully it was just fluke thing might have to change out the only thing I can tell is that the little 
mounting point is different, so we're going to have to, I guess, splice one of those in, but apart from that, I think we're all right. Otherwise, um, came with the wire, so I can splice it if I need to. Uh, whoops. It would go into that lead right there. And so I'm going to plug it, plug everything back in. If I need to splice that wire connector together, I will do so. When we put it in, just make sure you see that there's a little bit of a play here. So what you can do is you can gap this thing. You can gap it to ten thousandths. That's about what you need to be. It's about the width of a business card. If you can do that, you can get a business card out and slap it on there. Then you're good. I'll get this thing on here, gap it appropriately rejoin you after that so the bottom bolts are by far the hardest thing to do on this because you have to get over this lip and then get over the park brake rod with some like extensions and I mean I got like this and the universals out here somewhere uh, and then you gotta like finger it in so that you can at least get a thread on it so that you don't strip thread it's, it's bad but it's back on Either way, we're going to put everything else back on. Y'all saw how I took it off. It's going to be the same, putting it back together. Do not forget your ground wires right here for your battery cable and for, what would that be? Something that goes through the wiring harness, probably the ignition switch or something along those lines, or the engine accessories, or the accessories over there on the dash. Don't forget to put that back on. We're going to put the battery back on, the mount back on, and we're going to see if this thing will run any better than it did earlier. I've put it all back together. Let me give you the Cliff Notes version of it. Number one, gap the coil correctly. There is a, uh, so I gapped it to the flywheel because I'm used to Briggs and Stratton's to where they're flush. And, but that has a, this has the magnet sticks out of it. So find the magnet, gap it accordingly, put a business card down there or a 10, um, 10 thousandths feeler gauge and gap it like that. You got that straight, got the bottom bolts back on somehow with all types of tools uh, because you're going over the brake rod down there and you're going over the uh, the frame. So you got to get them, do some contortion to get them threaded back in. Once you get those back in, you're all right. Pretty home free after that. Take these three top bolts and then you put this mount back on with the four uh, four bolts here. Don't forget to put your ground wire back on, the one that goes to the wiring harness and the one that goes to the frame. And then we can put the car back on. Again, put your choke lever back on. It slides through that slot the cable does and then this little round piece, cylindrical piece, slides down into that. And then put your linkage back on for your carb. Slide your car back on, make sure your gaskets are good. Put this separation plate here where the choke mounts to. Put that in between this and the plastic elbow. It's not an elbow, but the plastic pipe that goes on the other side of the car. Breather tube, this rubber pipe, air filter, air filter um, housing. Put that back on first, or your air filter bracket before your housing. Make sure your breather tubes are connected. Put your fuel line back on. And hook your spark plug wire back up. And you get this. See how much easier it started? And response from the throttle. So we're good. Remember when y'all first saw it, it was an act of Congress to try and crank. You think it's a fuel issue, but it's not. That's pretty typical of how long it takes to start right there. I'm going to take this thing for a ride. We're going to finish this video up in just a second. So I took it around the block, which is about a mile. I've let it sit for a minute. And we're going to see if uh, it cranks back up here. Awesome, that's perfect. 
Just an ignition coil, guys. Disguised itself, though. Any everyday person would have thought that was a carb issue. So we'll wrap this video up now. So there it is. Guys, this one's a hard one to film. I hope that if you came for finding out how to put an ignition coil on one of these things, that I at least help you out some. It's not the easiest thing to film being all down there in it. Um, but hopefully found it helpful. I'll put a link to the ignition coil in the description below. Um, I wanted to film this video specifically because even a small engine guy who does this for a living misdiagnosed this. Um, it easily can fool itself as a carb issue because it seems like it's hard to start and then once it catches it runs fine and then a little bit off idle is when it kind of tries to die out and stuff like that but again you gotta listen to your customer it started doing it it runs fine when it's cold um, once you warm up that's when the issue started to arise and it's progressively gotten worse and worse and worse a carb issue you would think you could pull the choke out and it would give it enough fuel to start but you're sitting there working the choke working the throttle finally you get it to go and uh, we didn't have to do that anymore, thankfully. So uh, ignition coil did it. It's just a terrible, terrible access down there. You can't get that um, main cover off very easily. Those two bolts at the bottom are just horrendous to try and, number one, get off, and then, number two, get back on. The rest of it's up pretty straightforward, nothing really crazy. Just make sure you get your ignition coil gap correctly. I made that mistake the first time I put this on. Had to kind of tear some of it back apart to get it back online. But we're good now. Use a business card or use a feeler gauge. Ten thousandths is about where you need to be. Thank you again for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Something different to work on. An issue that may be misconceived as a fuel issue that I wanted to get out there on the internet, YouTube, social to show you that you need to check your spark and check uh, check for spark to see if it's strong, um, consistent, and then uh, that led me to replacing the ignition coil because the valves, valves were good, compression was good, fuel delivery was good because the plug was wet. So process of elimination, put an ignition coil on it, things running great again. Thanks guys. And I'll take y'all take care and I'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for the support as always. And I'll see you on the next one.